as well. We're starting to do some welding today on our arch structure. You can see that's going to be the angle of it, or close to it. Um, they put some provisional uh, holes into the deck just to hold it so they kind of get the location for mounting plates. Ricky, our welder, is going to put a lot of hours into this arch, and while he works on that, we can focus on other things, but not indefinitely. Bill's got to check in regularly to make sure the project is moving according to the plan and resolve any issues that pop up as progress is made. Well, it's finally starting to look like an arch. We're just going over some of the design details here, but you can see I'm getting the vertical supports in. And I was talking to my friends here. I want to add one more support. I don't love this all the load coming to here, so we're talking should I go from the side deck up, which is a curve, and where should we go straight down to the hull? Um, I think we're leaning towards going to the hull because it's not like the old situation where all the weight was on the hull. It's all now is divided amongst two other places. Um, yeah, it's getting, looking good. I'm getting excited for it. So the arch has really started coming together now. Um, you can see we have supports in, and it's starting to look really cool, like a proper arch. Um, the one thing we overlooked was we started welding the arch to the stern rail without sealing the base plates. So now I'm in a situation where I'm trying to get some tension on our halyard to bring the whole thing up. I broke all these out, I unscrewed them, but nothing is budging, so. <laughs> Just another day, but overall, I think this thing looks yeah, I think Amazing. I feel like for the prices this thing is being built for, it's like this would be like a fifteen thousand dollar project in the states. It's hard because um, every every weld is basically a decision point, though. So when the welder comes, his name is Ricky. I basically sit with him and just kind of watch because, we, for instance, we had to decide to angle this. Like, how much do you want this twisted that way? Do you want it twisted that way? Do you want it straight up and down? How do you want to meet that pipe? How much length? So everything is a decision point in like the shape and how it's going to turn out. So. It's a bigger project than I thought it would be. I probably, I'm probably like 35, 40 hours in just the design phase, like sitting with the welders, drawing it out in trough, trying to get the scale right. Um, but I think it's gonna be really cool when it's done. And they're doing a great job with welds and it's gonna be super strong. Yeah. So what does all this mean? The bottom line is that a mistake was made that we'll now have to fix, even though overall we're happy with the quality of the arch construction thus far. What? Yeah, I'm just looking at it now, like, I might be a little wood in that one. I would suck. That's definitely just glass. That's definitely just glass. I need epoxy that one. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna... The mistake is that the feet of the arch have been welded to the boat's stern rail before they were properly installed to the deck. And now that these pieces are welded together, it's impossible to lift and move the structure to work on the feet. The focus until now was getting the geometry of the structure right, so the feet were installed temporarily for that purpose. Oh yeah, I can't see the hole. Properly mounting the feet to the deck entails one of two options, depending on the core material where each is located. Either using butyl tape around each screw hole, or filling each with epoxy. The butyl tape is easier, but can only be used if the location is fiberglass core. If it's balsa core, a type of wood, then it has to be filled using epoxy. It can't hurt to have epoxy. No, it's the right thing to do. I think the moral of this story is like a good learning thing for other people who might um, be designing their own arches. Uh, yeah, the whole thinking ahead thing, it's pretty hard to do, but you guys find yourself in the same situation. Why, Make sure your welder doesn't. This is why I stopped doing other projects while, this yeah. is why I stopped doing other projects while I was working. For a while I was trying to like multitask, but um, if I just really, I think it's just been to be for a couple more days really until he's just sort of cleaning up all the welds. Like, I, all the welds are not gone over yet. They have to be like totally sealed so no water get in them. But I think until that point, I'm just gonna kind of watch and make sure all the details are being taken care of. Like for instance, we almost, we want to put a bar here too, but now the outboard mount is here. So it was almost like he put this here and we almost have trapped this. So now it's like another design mandate. We have to make another box so this can move out. We raise the bar up here, we put the bar down here. So it's like all these decisions I have to make kind of as things are being built, so if you if you focus on it, it seems better. Like I said, that's how this wound up. I wasn't paying attention, I was just kind of doing other stuff on the bottom of the boat. You literally learn, but yeah, we can't, this is just so solid. I, I drilled this out, I tried to like get this free, but this thing will not budge. I have so much halyard tension on it. 
Like it's just so, this is like rock, but I can't get it to go, so. Hmm. I don't know. This one will be easier. See that? I can get yeah, to Yeah, it's moving. Okay. So we're trying to determine if these back ones are fossil core in the deck. Um, we were seeing brown on one of the holes, but it's actually a wood backing plate for, I think, like the stanchion. I don't know why Saber made it out of wood, but. Well, thank God. Yes, yeah, so I think I think we're I think we're okay to lay it here. Yeah. I unfortunately have to chop off this wooden block though a little bit. So we think this little brown stuff we're seeing in one of these holes is a wood backing, backing plate. plate. But I'm gonna reduce and not false the core. So yeah, Bill's gonna. We drilled we drilled through it, so I'm gonna go reduce it now. Because we have to get rid of it if that's what it is so that we can fit the back. Why is that on? Why is that on? Besides butyl tape or epoxy. Each foot needs to be mounted with a backing plate underneath the deck. So for this spot, Bill needs to clear old material that's currently in the way. Jesus, that's louder here. Better now? Let's see. A solid fiberglass. Oh, sweet. <sighs> Grace has a little hand, so we get her fingers in between. We don't have that much space and have the halyard cranked on pretty hard. That's as far as I get it to move, though. Uh, we're really lucky it's solid glass there. There's a very narrow space between the deck and the metal foot, and the butyl tape is sticky, so the process will be time consuming. We decided around this point in time that would film the entire sequence of steps required to fix the welding error to show you guys the reality of boat project life. Things don't always move in a linear fashion. Mistakes get made and fixing them is often a painstaking and time consuming process. At times frustrating when you know the whole thing could have been avoided. Well, not the whole thing, since the feet always needed to be installed, just not with the limitation of having no space. Oh, oh my hip. I know it's got to be somewhere like. Well, it's got to be somewhere outboard, eh? It's like right, it's back there. Like that's one of them. Yeah. <sighs> I think it's like back there more. And even though we knew at the time we'd begun the process of fixing, it would take a while. We underestimated by a lot exactly how long it would eventually take. Anything? I'm not really... I'm not hitting the hole, huh? Try again, I... I push it with my feet? I feel like it's also more this way. Yeah, it's just so hard to move this thing. Cleaning up the side. It's proved more challenging than we thought having things welded into place, but making it work. We were just kind of laughing about how many projects we wind up using a winch for to get mechanical advantage. It's like, I don't know how we get half the things done without the strength of the winches. Yeah, we've been using this one. <laughs> yeah, just like just to get the metal so hard to bend by force, but able to pick up the halyard. It's pretty, works pretty well. Winches for the win. Nice. Is there any wood in there?
So I just cut out the hull liner, which is like this gel coat thing. Um, it was in the way of accessing the screws, so... It's just cosmetic. It's just right? cosmetic, yeah. yeah. I'll glue it back in place when I'm done. But I need to be able to get up there to get the screws out, get to the screws. And then actually, right now, I'm gonna put tape over the holes and then pour epoxy in there, let that sit overnight. Um, that's so that the core is sealed. If there is core, we couldn't really tell, but we figured better safe than sorry. It's like, I don't know, half an hour of work. Yeah, we weren't 100% sure there's also core in there. It we might have, tell, might yeah. have only been um, fiberglass, but we're just gonna epoxy it. It's anyway. always better to be safe than sorry in this kind of situation. Yeah. I like this stuff. This is uh, from Total Boat. It's a pre mixed epoxy, thickened epoxy. Uh, you just put it in a gun, and it's pretty easy to clean up and use, so it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Particularly for what we're doing, where we have the tape that's yeah. going to be catching the epoxy, because if it's too thin or watery, then sometimes it will leak through the tape. Yeah, it's kind of cool little uh, like we, we mixing oh, nozzle yeah. that kind of like meters the right amount of resin and, and uh, hardener. Kind of cool. It was cool. The duct tape's on the underside of the holes, and we're gonna, you'll see, we're gonna squeeze the epoxy into the holes, and then the, the tape will prevent it from dripping down. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. This is gonna be the last project of the day today for us. <laughs> okay. Probably kind of waste this whole roll. Ready to go? See, let's go. Time to go to the boatyard. See this place in another, I don't know, eight hours. <laughs> Momentum and then Mexico. And this is the state of Calico skies. It probably looks pretty bad to you guys, and it's I mean it's not good, but actually it's actually not nearly as bad as it would be if we didn't have the apartment because we have so much stuff there. So <laughs> the fact that there's any walking space at all is a huge improvement. So the first thing we checked when we got here was our epoxy that we did yesterday and it's tacky. This is the starboard side that's facing into the sun. And then on that side, it's downright like liquid. Um, so it gets down to, I think it was like 40, it was the 40s, maybe mid 40s last night and it gets quite cold like as soon as the sun goes down it's not really like a low it's like a slow temperature drop it's like a you know seven o'clock the sun sets and it's cold and the sun doesn't rise until seven so it just hasn't had enough time to cure so we're just gonna do um, focus on the back two um, parts of the stern rail that we didn't have to epoxy today and then tomorrow we'll yeah, it should be set by then, hopefully. And these will be backing plates, just to give, it just gives strength, right? Uh, so it distributes the load when there's weight on the davits. Instead of having just the oh. screws and the washers against the hull, like this transfers the load. And this is G G10, Ten, right? Yep. So, yeah, I just kind of made a circle and just kind of marking where, cut it in the fours. The front two are floating still, so it's much easier to get the exact hole template. These are not plates that were bought from a store. They were uh, made here by the welder, Ricky. So there's a chance that the holes aren't perfectly symmetrical across all four of the feet. So these two, at least I'm gonna get the right bolt pattern, and then the other two I'll have to sort of measure and estimate and maybe make the hole a little bit bigger. Oh, don't move. And we get in my hole. Such a tight spot. 
Which shaft screw are you on? Got it. Okay. It's a slow going process, huh? Like another day and like... Yeah. Well, it's a new day, and we are back at the stern rail again. Um, we have one more screw to do on this side, and then we have to do the other side, so. <laughs> and the epoxy still didn't cure there. <clears throat> oh yeah. This one is still wet, it's been over, what, like 40 hours now. Okay. It's really hard off the body though to like do that with one hand and then. Coke yoga. So witty today. It's not usually quite this windy, but it has been pretty windy, and that's really what's making it cold. Uh, that's one back and plate in. Five more to go. Oops. We just ran back to the house to get more layers. Brooke and Gary lent us their car, so. It's a quick ride. Yeah, it's so cold, like our pot's not even setting. Okay, we just dropped off the car to Brooke and Gary, and we're gonna <laughs> plug in the space heater. <laughs> 47 in the cabin, and it's just really cold with the wind, so we'll be good now. I've got more coffee. Uh oh, seriously? What? <laughs> I think the threads might be damaged on this one. One strip screw that's spinning out in the felt head. So I'm gonna try to get like a flat head in there so we can work it. So we're just gonna call it a day with that one. We need one more bolt, but they're like all pretty much in except for that back one. I just don't have the strength. So this side of hoxy is done, so now we can get ready to seal it back up. Yep. When I release this winch, it's gonna just scrape across the butyl tape, so. I'm gonna have uh, Grace help guide it, so I'm gonna put some upward pressure as we release it, and just get a screw in, and hopefully that's it. Um, it's a little hard for all these angles, so everything's trying to just pop out on this arch. Biggies. going right you feel it grabbing I think so I just made a little log to go underneath the head and then it just like helps seal it up okay so now we got to get this backing plate this on. guy backing plate on here down bill goes. 
No. And it still doesn't fit. So Bill has to make the holes bigger again. Yeah. Or angle them slightly more. This fits. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> you get it? I got one. And now Bill's got the plate on, so I'm gonna be up above holding the screwdriver while he tries to get the bolt on from down below. Okay, I'm ready. So, util tape is all smushed down, and that's in, so now we have... Three <laughs> out of six done. Yeah, we have... We're halfway there. Uh, what did we do? <laughs> one, half Two. yesterday, that one earlier, and then this one, and then this one is still curing, so we can't do that one yet, but we can... Um, do you want to put the pipes on that, that Ricky gave us? Or, yeah, this or was what were you thinking? This was the problem again, because this is into the locker, but the port side should be pretty straightforward. We started another project related to the arch at this point, since the epoxy still wasn't set on the port side. But we'll have to save this one for next time. In reality, we spent another couple of hours at the yard on this particular day, and after three days in total, all of the arch feet were still not installed. Though this project is time consuming in nature, our mistake definitely cost us time and aggravation. But as they say, in this life, you're only one stripped screw from disaster. And with that, we're gonna pack up and do this all over again tomorrow, but I think yeah, we... We made great progress today. Yeah. Making progress, so it feels good. Exactly. There's a life I lead in this city Hurry and to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by Doesn't make it easy